Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in. This is Michael with Someonesbones.com, bringing you the latest and greatest Nibiru news and information. Today, I have a topic of importance to speak on. A topic so sensitive that my very life is at risk by mere mentioning it. A subject of earth-shattering importance with dire repercussions. I am talking, of course, about my cat. Okay, the broadcast is not really all about my cat, a wonderful, big, two-year-old boy. But so many of you have left so many nice comments about him, how could I not showcase him off here with a few photographs? On to a more serious note. I would like to talk today about what I call or what I refer to as the Nibiru Wars which is a pinnacle event that actually started my foray into Nibiru research. And I'm just going to talk about it a little bit because I am writing a book titled The Nibiru Wars. Now before people throw their hands up and start screaming, he's writing a book so he can scam money out of you, I will be offering this book entirely for free to everyone once completed. I think one of the few things that sets me apart from my contemporary Nibiru fellow researchers out there is that I step away from the science, even though I still do cover that topic, and I go into discussing the geopolitical spectrum and how Nibiru has influenced world politics, or moreover, how world politicians have reacted clandestinely to the existence of Nibiru. Now, other people might not cover this because they do not have the investigative resources or it might just not be a topic they are interested in. But nonetheless, it is an important subject that does play a large piece in the whole Nibiru puzzle going on. And in order to get to the truth, we have to examine everything. And that's what I always say, that everything needs to be needs to be looked at and checked out. In order to fully understand the scope of what has transpired in the world of politics, we have to go back to the 1950s and thereafter when that so-called Cold War existed between the United States and back then the Soviet Union. The two nations have always been in a race. We raced to the moon, we raced to get atomic weapons, and we all, the United States and the Soviet Union also raced to be the first nation to image the Nibiru star system, which in 1983, the, the U.S. using the infrared astronomical satellite and the Soviet Union using its own proprietary technology did obtain images of the Nibiru system. Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan had diametrically opposite positions as to how to handle the information obtained. Once the threat level was determined and a decision was made by both countries that Nibiru would eventually cross into the inner solar system, Mikhail Gorbachev favored worldwide disclosure, whereas Ronald Reagan was adamantly against the concept of anybody knowing about Nibiru. He was so aggressive about it that he signed into order, into law, or into order, the Nibiru Secrecy Act of 1983, which was actually a secret executive order that he signed forbidding any government official or any scientist or anybody with actual knowledge about Nibiru from speaking publicly on it. When Ronald Reagan learned that Gorbachev planned to go public, this is when the crap hit the fan. To boil it down into a few sentences without talking for hours on the topic, 
the bottom line is that our country or my country, the United States, threatened nuclear Armageddon with Russia if Gorbachev went forward with publicly talking about Nibiru. Now, why did this happen? I do not have all the answers to the questions. There are a, are a lot of unanswered questions out there. But the fact is, is that Ronald Reagan was essentially crazy about keeping this topic a secret. And Gorbachev, he was the more level-headed party. He did not want to see the world prematurely destroyed in a nuclear Armageddon. He believed that there might be hope and that there might be a means to defusing the Nibiru topic or Nibiru situation without 20,000 nuclear missiles flying back and forth between the United States, Russia, and each of our allies. Now, a lot of people rag on me. They say, you're a Ruski, you're a raghead, or a Muslim because you say this. No, I am an American, I love America, and I have faith in, Ameri in America. However, I also know that our leaders have never, ever, ever had our interests at heart and are out to protect themselves with everything including the Nibiru conspiracy which is perhaps the most diabolical cover-up greater than anything else greater than the JFK assassination greater than 9-11 we are talking about a topic of worldwide importance with global ramifications and why Reagan felt so uh, I don't know the word, felt so deeply about keeping that secret, I do not know. He felt that the world would break down, go into madness, a uh, complete societal breakdown, riots and everything else, if the people would stop going to work, if everybody found out about Nibiru, and that eventually this dark star and its seven orbiting planets would come into contact with Earth and ravage the world that we live in right now. While Gorbachev, Gorbachev chose a more measured response by eagerly wanting to go ahead and get this information out, hoping that the world would come together collaboratively to work against defeating, I don't know if that is the right word, Nibiru, Nemesis, whatever whatever word you use for it. And we have to look at this um, from a perspective, a collective perspective, and figure out why so many governments out there have been concealing Nibiru. And yes, there is no doubt that Nibiru has been concealed. Google Sky has blacked out Nibiru. Nibiru astronomers have died mysteriously going all the way back to Robert Sutton Harrington's death and probably before that. And I don't have the document at hand, but there is a document out there and I will try and pick that up detailing exactly how many astronomers and politicians have died who have wanted to bring this information to the public eye. It's not one, it's not five, it's not ten. It's not even dozens. It's uh, scores of people that have perished mysteriously because they have expressed an interest in Nibiru and wanting to bring this out to the public. And for the United States, administration after administration has worked to keep this information secret. I'm talking about Bush, I'm talking about Clinton, I am talking about the other Bush, I am talking about Obama, who is possibly the most egregious offender in keeping the Nibiru controversy secret because he actually was spotted burning 
what is commonly referred to as the Nibiru documents before he left office. And I will be talking about that more. I have mentioned it in a few articles before. But I will be going into more detail on that based on some newly discovered information about how this guy, and I hate to even call him a former president, screwed over our country by hurling files about Nibiru into the Oval Office fireplace just to prevent Donald Trump from getting his hands on them. And believe me when I tell you this, Trump is furious about Obama's actions and the fact that he found out that Obama burned a lot of the evidence supporting Nibiru's existence and Nibiru's location and a lot of the tracking information about Nibiru. One thing that cannot be disputed is that Trump is, a, like many of us, a truth seeker. We all know that before he ever ent entered the presidential race, he was very eager to prove that Obama was not a natural-born American citizen. He has also expressed deep concerns regarding the truth behind the 9-11 conspiracy. Therefore, it is not a stretch to postulate that Trump has an interest in bringing forth the Nibiru truth. And honestly, we believe, based on information provided by credible and reliable people, that Trump is very eager to get that information out. In fact, he almost had the words on his lips during his inauguration speech when he talked about unlocking the mysteries of space. Trump wants to talk about Nibiru. He wants to warn the world about Nibiru. But he has people opposing him both within his own party and, of course, external forces. Therefore, he is being cautious, and rightfully so. He has to make sure the time is right before he brings this out. Not to mention the fact that he has recently received, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? I don't know. But the Vatican has essentially threatened him. And if you've read our previous articles or listened to our videos, that Pope Francis has essentially told Trump that mentioning the word Nibiru or talking about Nibiru would be his downfall. And Trump is a very brazen man. He speaks what is on his mind. He does not care about political consequences, but his, handler, his handlers do. And to some extent, he is heeding the advice of these people. Therefore, he is being cautious. In the end, the Nibiru Wars has to deal with the entire global conspiracy regarding Nibiru. I will never ever argue against people that that display pure science. They want to show pictures of Nibiru. They want to talk about where Nibiru is in the sky, what constellation. That is fine. But that is never my agenda because I am not a scientist. I am not an astronomer. I am a reporter who deviated from mainstream media because I was interested in pursuing the truth. And Nibiru is the ultimate truth. In closing, I would like to say this. I have a lot of critics. I have a lot of detractors out there. And that is fine. I only argue with the people who are relentlessly insulting toward other people, not just myself. I, I am not going to deny that I try to add some humor into my pieces because let Let's face it, Nibiru is a serious topic, it deserves serious consideration, and if my life is going to end because 
a rogue solar system is going to plunge into our inner solar system, which cannot be good and cause catastrophic, catastrophic event, events uh, on our planet. I want to be lighthearted about it. If I'm going to die, I want to go out laughing. I don't want to. I don't want to go out with a sad face. And I hope everybody else feels the same. So to the people out there who say that uh, I blame everything on Nibiru, I do not blame everything on Nibiru. For example, I do not blame my last divorce on Nibiru. I blame that on my wife. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, this is Michael from Nibiru News from someone'sbones.com signing out. Keep it real. Stay calm and have a great week. Thank you for listening and thank you for subbing. Bye-bye.